Hey guys, welcome to the third video on radicals. Uh, this one I just want to get, uh, go through a, an example that you may see on an old test or uh, you just find elsewhere. And uh, it's a little bit of a harder example. Um, and it's the reagents don't look as familiar. And so I just want to quickly go over uh, how we can approach this problem. All right. And so it says the following reaction is an example of a free radical cyclization reaction. The major product is compound one, right? We have this eight membered ring bound to a five member ring. And so it says which radical intermediates are formed during the course of the reaction that leads to the minor product, which is compound two. Okay, so they want us to find the radical intermediates of compound two. And so we have this reagent BU3SNH and an AIBN initiator. All right, now I know it looks weird, but uh, it's not really that different from anything you've seen. So the first step is always an initiation step in dealing with radicals. Okay, and so the good thing is you don't really need to know the mechanism for this. So when you three, you when you see Bu3SNH and AIBN, like that initiator, you know you just um, it's going to be Bu3SN radical. The H is going to come off the AIBN, and we get our radical, and that's our initiation step. Now we have to go through our propagation step. Right, which is our actual re uh, reaction. And so they asked for compound two, but let's focus on compound one first, just so we are familiar with what's going on here. Okay, and so let's redraw that compound, that eight member ring. And let's analyze our compound one that we form. You can see that we still keep our eight member ring and the lower double bond remains but the upper one disappears, so does our iodine, and we see that we form a five-member ring. Well, you can kind of tell that because the eight-member ring itself stayed the same, that the five-member ring formed from that uh, chain coming off the side, so we definitely know that's gonna have to play in the reaction. And we see our double bond is gone at the top, so we have to use that, right? And so, how does this work? So let's put our Bu3SN radical, all right? And so we're definitely going to have to form some sort of radical. Uh, and we know that the five member ring is going to, uh, we're going to form a five member ring using the side chain. So we're going to react with our iodine. We're going to take one electron from Bu3SN. It's going to form part of the bond. Remember, there's two electrons in here. And so uh, one of them is going to form the other part of the bond. And this one radical is going to end up on that carbon. And so let's draw our intermediate. Keep that double bond there. Keep everything the same that you know doesn't change. And we end up with that radical here and Bu3SNI. All right, that is just going to go off to the side. It's going to move it. And so we have this reaction. And we have this intermediate. Now we have to form our five member ring. Okay, so we can see that our A member ring is going to stay the same. So let's number our side chain to see how it's going to happen. All right. Uh, actually, let's number compound one to see how it's going to happen. So let's start at this carbon. One, two, three, four, five. And now I'm going to number our compound the same way and see if we can how we can get our five member ring. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, so that confirms it that we're definitely going to be using our side chain to take part in this reaction. And so we know that we're going to have to use the, utilize the double bond as well. And we know that it's going to bind from carbon 5 to 1. So remember, there's two electrons in here. So then we now know that one of the electrons in that double bond is going to form part of the bond. And the one from 5 will form the other part. And we also know that that last radical, part of that double bond, will come over here. Double bond stays. And let's now, oh, that was bad. So that would be our intermediate, but let's number to make sure that we had it correct. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see that matches up with what we have here and what we numbered on comp compound one. That's great. 
Now to finish off compound one, we take another one of our Bu3SNH, and we take we are going to take an H from it, again using radicals. So that radical forms part of the bond. The H form H radical forms another part, and that last electron ends up on Bu3SN. So what we're going to get is this compound. And now remember there was actually another H over there. Uh, so technically we have two H's, but the one from Bu3SN we just added was the first one I drew, right? So that's compound one. But they asked for the intermediates of compound two. So looking at compound two, it's three five-membered rings, right? Well, we already formed one. And so I'm going to start from that intermediate. So we have this intermediate and that radical. So we need to now form uh, uh, two five-member rings. We have one, and so we, uh, oh wait, I drew this ring wrong. That's better. All right, and we have this. And so we know that we have one five-member ring, so we just need to make two, two more. Well, we know that it's probably going to have to come from our eight-member ring, right? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to number our eight-member ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? And so we're not adding any carbons or anything here, right? So what we should think about now is collapsing the eight-member ring to two five-member rings, right? Because we already know that that side five-member ring is going to stay. So we need to now break down the eight-member ring into a five-member ring. We know that our radical, our carbon one, is going to have to play a role, and that our double bond will also probably have to play a role. All right, and so let's see what happens if I start forming a bond somewhere. So I'm just going to draw a bond from carbon one because we know it will definitely have to start at least over there. And let's just try carbon five. What happens if we form that, that bond? All right, let's just count up our sides to see if our five-member ring can form there. One of the sides is that purple bond. All right, then we're going to have two, three, four, five. So that's a five-member ring. What about our other side? One, two, three, four, five. Right, they share that purple bond. And so, great. We know exactly where our bond is going to have to form to get our two five-member rings. It's going to have to form from carbon one all the way to carbon five, okay? Uh, yeah, from carbon one to five. And so how exactly are we going to do this? Well, we're going to have to, again, use the radical from carbon one. And one of the electrons in this double bond, remember there's two. And so that radical is going to reach out and form part of it. And then this one here forms another. This last one ends up on carbon six. And so let's draw the ugly version first to make it easier on ourselves. I always recommend drawing the ugly version first because it helps you keep everything straight. And so number first. We know we formed the bond from one and five and we have a radical at six. And so we count up our sides. We're going to get two five-member rings within there. I know it doesn't look like two five-member rings, but that's because we kind of drew it ugly, right? We still have the framework of that eight-membered ring. And so now all we have to do is um, redraw uh, with what you know is going to happen. We know that we have our side five-member ring, and we know that we just collapsed that eight-member ring into two five-member rings, which you can just count the sides to confirm that. And so just redraw it. And we can number after to make sure we have everything correct. Okay. So we're going to have this structure. Now let me draw that better. And we're going to have this. But now let's number because we know that we still have a radical somewhere. And that's what we need to focus on. They want the intermediates. Okay, uh, and so I'm going to just start uh, numbering over here. Um, let me just actually change the numbering that we have here, just so everything is on the all the carbons are numbered. Okay, so 
I'm going to go into this one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So let's go. One, oh, let's do it in red. One, five, four, uh, three, and two. Next to five was six. Oh, sorry, I miscounted this. Next to five was six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So now let's compare what we had. Oh, and a radical at now carbon eight right there. So let's just look at our original structure to make sure we counted it correctly. One and five were across from each other, right? Which we have on our, the right structure. And we have our um, two, three, uh, two, three, and four carbon on the ring on the right. To the left of five was six, which stayed consistent. Then one over to the left is seven. 7 to the, to the left of 7 was 8, and also across from 7 was carbon 11. And then we have 8, 9, and 10. So everything checks out in terms of how the numbering works. If you, when you're drawing your end product, your numbering isn't maybe working out for you, uh, then you can, you can play around with it a bit. Because if I, let's say I try to draw this, I'm going to number it how I was originally numbering it. And so I'm going to now go like this, one, two, three, four, five. So to the left of five was six, and seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And so now carbon eight had a radical on here, but now let's look at what we have compared to our previous intermediate. The ring on the right looks okay, but then carbon eleven we showed over here, right there, was part of it's going to be the carbon where one of the bonds comes down to form the ring. Whereas carbon 11 uh, here, you can see that it's not part of the carbon that forms the uh, side shared by the rings. So we know that our numbering was off and therefore our intermediate here is wrong because you can see that the, even though it looks like the same three member structure, our radical intermediate is incorrect. And because they asked for the radical intermediates, uh, you might pick the wrong one because looking at this structure, it actually matches uh, structure three. Okay, and so that can make you uh, get an incorrect answer. So always be careful with the numbering. Okay, and so let's just erase that one. All right, and so the last step that we would have here is another Bu3SNH. And we're going to finish this off forming a bond, uh, forming an H bond using radicals. Nope, let's draw that better. And now we have an H there. And again, remember, there was another H at carbon 8, so there's technically two. And so that's for our intermediates that lead to that structure. Okay, so we just formed our structure. And so look at our radical intermediates. So we formed a radical right here, right? The structure at that primary carbon at the end. So that's structure one. So let's check that off. The next intermediate we formed was right over here. After we formed the five member ring, it's gonna be two carbon, one carbon away from that ring. All right, and so that matches the structure two. And the other radical intermediate we formed was right here. On our five member ring, it's gonna be on the leftmost ring, one carbon away from that carbon we numbered as seven. And if we look, it's gonna be carbon five, it's gonna be structure five. Now you see that structure three was that previous incorrectly numbered intermediate. So picking that answer could have made you get it wrong, would make you get this question wrong. So it's not gonna be this one. 
definitely not going to be this one. And so structure one, two, and five. And so our answer is B. Okay. Uh, so this is definitely a comp more complex example. Uh, it's not as straightforward as maybe an HBR uh, addition using peroxides or uh, BR2. Okay. And so this is definitely one of the more complex examples that you could see. Uh, but also, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you guys know what this BU3SN stuff is just in case you see it. I don't want anyone to be thrown off by it. Okay. Uh, so I hope this video helped you guys. If you're confused by it, please let me know. You know, you can email me uh, or if you see me around, definitely feel free to stop me and I can always help you guys out. Uh, and also always please make sure to go to the CLC. TA is there always happy to help you guys, right? It's a great resource for you guys. And I will see you in the next video. Good luck.